four months after jurors had the final word in the 26-year-old mystery surrounding Kristen Smart's death, another set of jurors may have to make another decision about her killer, Paul Flores. He has asked for a new trial during his sentencing hearing that was continued from December until today and started two hours ago in Monterey County. Flores was the last person seen with Kristen Smart, who was raised in Stockton before starting her freshman year at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo back in 1996. Witnesses who picked an impaired Smart up off of a campus lawn and tried to walk her home after a party say Flores appeared out of the darkness and promised to get her all the way to her dorm room, but she was never seen again. He was convicted last October. His father, who had long been accused of helping him hide her remains, was acquitted four months ago as well. Jeremy Evans, president of the California Lawyers Association, with me now live to break down the latest developments in this case. Jeremy, welcome to Fox 40 News at 11. Sean Charay, pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Sentencing was supposed to be the focus for Paul Flores today, given that he was convicted of first-degree murder last fall. What were the penalty options for him heading into today's hearing? We've been monitoring that hearing, the sentence not given yet. A minimum of 25 years behind bars, that's right? That's correct. All righty, any other range that you see the uh, judge going for here, or you think it's going to sit at the 25? I think it's probably going to sit at the 25. Uh, the, the, I think the strongest argument that uh, that Flores has is the conspiracy argument. But in reading the transcript for the case, I think it's, it's a rather weak argument. Uh, ultimately, I think he's going to be sentenced. I think that the, uh, the motions uh, to dismiss are going to be thrown out. Alrighty, and I think that we um, are also getting some word out of the court that so far the motions for acquittal have been denied and the motions for a new trial have been denied. As you were kind of you just referencing this whole conspiracy issue, kind of explain where they might have been going with that. We know it's not a successful argument at this time, but what would have been the conspiracy here? Well, and see, that's what's so interesting because I think that the defense was trying to poke holes as a defense attorney should, uh, in terms of doing their job, but I think they were trying to poke holes in the fact that uh, the prosecutor was trying to say that the jury in, in his closing argument would, would only have two options, to either think that he would, the person would be guilty of conspiracy or guilty of, mur of murder. Mm -hmm. And in my reading of the transcript, that was not the case. It, it looked clearly to me uh, that he was basically making a reference to something the defense attorney had talked about and that with the amount of evidence that was presented, uh, it would have to take a conspiracy against him to think that uh, he did not commit the crime. Mm, all righty. We know they were also pointing toward judicial error as the potential grounds in this case. As you looked over the transcripts, did you see any of those errors or something that you would classify as such? No, and, and I think that it's, it's, it's really, uh, with, with judicial error, it's such a, uh, a high level to meet, and it's and it's a very serious, you know, accusation. And I, again, I don't think that it, it reaches that level uh, in, in this in this particular case. Um, we know that two days ago, NBC affiliate KSBY broadcast an early police interview with Paul that prosecutors originally said wouldn't be available until after sentencing. Do you think that sort of influenced what happened today? And might there be any future claim about that getting out ahead of sentencing? I don't think so, because, you know, ultimately it's going to be the judge in this particular situation, not a jury uh, looking at those issues, right, in terms of the sentencing. But, you know, there, there might be an issue with, um, you know, a reprimand or something like that if, if, it, if it rose to that level. But again, I don't think that's sort of in this situation, I don't think it affected the outcome uh, of the case. Thank you so much for your insight this morning. We appreciate you. And, of course, still waiting to see what the official sentence will be for Paul Flores after the murder of Kristen Smart. We appreciate you. Thank you so much.